All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at tangent planes. So this lecture goes along with section 4.4 in the OpenStax textbook, Calculus Volume 3. So we'll see how to find the equation of a tangent plane for a function of two variables and how to use that tangent plane as a linear approximation, uh, which leads to the idea of the differential dz for a function z. This image shows the idea with the tangent plane in the same way that a tangent line is gonna just touch a curve at a single point uh, and have a fixed slope equal to the slope at that point. The tangent plane uh, will touch a surface at a single point and just have uh, the same uh, normal vector as the surface would have at that point. So same idea as a tangent line, but in three dimensions. If our surface was uh, z is a function of x and y, and we had a specific point x, y in the domain, then the equation of the tangent plane is given here. Uh, you'll notice that this is just the value of the function in x naught y naught, and sometimes written as z naught. Uh, here we have the subscript notation for partial derivatives evaluated at the point. Uh, and then, of course, the overall structure is the same as for the equation of a plane in three dimensions that we saw in chapter two. The scalar equation of a plane was defined in terms of the point x naught, y naught, z naught, and the normal vector with components a, b, c. Again, we already mentioned that this is equivalent to z naught. Uh, and so you could rewrite this. Uh, so you have your z and z naught, and then x minus x naught, and y minus y naught. Uh, and then there is a connection between these partial derivatives and a, b, and c. Let's add little arrows here showing that. Let's look at an example here. F is a function of x and y. It's equal to 2x squared minus 3xy plus 8y squared plus 2x minus 4y plus 4. First, we want to find the partial derivatives. Partial derivative with respect to x. Uh, 2x squared would give us 4x. Negative 3xy would give us negative 3y. There's no x here, so the derivative is 0. 2x would give us 2, 0, 0. For y derivatives, uh, we go a little faster. This is 0, negative 3x, 16y, 0, negative 4, and 0. So we get our partial derivatives. And then we need to evaluate these functions at the point we're interested in. So say we want to find the tangent plane when x equals 2 and y equals negative 1. Here's the z naught value. And you get that just by putting the coordinates into the original function. Uh, and then you can use your partial derivative functions and evaluate them at the same point, And you get these three constants. And these all appear in the tangent plane equation. So they value the function goes first, and then the derivatives go second and third. And then you have x minus x naught, y minus y naught. Remember, x naught was 2, and y naught was negative 1. Now you can distribute and simplify this if you want, or you could even put it in the standard form uh, that we saw earlier for the scalar equation of a plane. If you end up graphing the function in the tangent plane, you'll see the function is this curved sheet, and then the tangent plane is a flat sheet that just touches it at just the right angle so that it touches at that one point we're interested in uh, and has the same slope as the surface does at that point. Now, we have may have some curved surface like the one shown here, and we're able to find the tangent plane. And if we go a little distance away, we'll notice that the straight tangent plane starts to veer off from the curved surface. But if you go a very short distance, it's actually pretty close still. And this gives rise to the notion of a linear approximation. If we go a short distance away from where the tangent plane touches the surface, 
uh, it will be very close approximation of the curved surface, even though it's a much simpler object to work with. Uh, and so we can use this to approximate values of functions uh, for which maybe we don't know what the surface is like. We just know what the tangent plane is like at some point. Right? And so this is the linear approximation to a function of two variables. And it looks just like that uh, tangent plane formula. Instead of Z, you have L, big L for linear approximation. Uh, this is your Z naught, and the rest of this is really the same. So it's just the equation of the tangent plane that's used to approximate the function. Uh, now, if we compare the function exact value with the approximate value, there's going to be some error uh, that is the difference between those two. Um, if that error goes to zero uh, as the point approaches the point where you've made the tangent plane, uh, then we say that the function is differentiable. Uh, so we found partial derivatives for a function of two variables before, but we didn't really define what differentiability was. Uh, and you see here that it, it sort of involves both partial derivatives uh, and uh, the tangent plane being a good approximation for the curved function of two variables. Um, now we brought up continuity and differentiability. Uh, it's not a bad idea to remind ourselves which one implies which one. Uh, I also thrown in integrability here as well. Uh, so which of these statements are true? Pause the recording if you need some more time. So uh, answer choice A is incorrect. Uh, continuity does not imply differentiability to show that this is false, all you need to do is come up with a continuous function that's not differentiable. Uh, and that's easy, just look at uh, the absolute value function. And when you have that, it has that sharp point there. It's continuous function, but it's not differentiable at the origin where it has that uh, sharp point. So just because a function's continuous doesn't mean it's differentiable. Um, uh, B is actually true. If a function is differentiable, then it must be continuous. Uh, and so proving that that's true for every function uh, is done, I believe, in a calculus one setting. We don't have time to do that today, but you won't be able to find an example of a function that's differentiable and is not continuous. If you look at the connection between continuity and integration, uh, then if a function is continuous, you are able to integrate it. Uh, and this just comes from the definition of the integral as the limit of Riemann sums. If you want to look at the converse, integrability implying continuity, uh, that's false. And all you have to do is come up with a function that is integrable, uh, but not continuous. Uh, and you could look at a step function. So say a function goes like this and then jumps up. This function's clearly not continuous, and yet we could easily integrate it, and uh, its integrals are just going to be these rectangles. So you can integrate that function, but it's not continuous, so integrability does not imply continuity. So B and C are the correct choices. And you want to have in mind some counterexamples for the false premises in A and D. Uh, so what's the connection between continuity and differentiability for functions of two variables? Uh, if you have a function of two variables and the function and its first order partial derivatives uh, are continuous, uh, then the function is differentiable. So, uh, you know, we just looked at uh, saying that continuity does not imply differentiability. Um, we're not saying that here, the continuity of f doesn't mean it's differentiable, but continuity of f and its partial derivatives, right? If, if all three of those are continuous, then the function is differentiable.
Now on to differentials. Uh, use link here to go back to the idea of differentials from calculus one, uh, but this picture more or less summarizes it. Uh, we'd be looking at approximating a curve function with a straight tangent line. And what you want to remember from this is the notation uh, that the triangle, uh, which is the Greek letter delta, indicates uh, actual changes within the function. And so the uh, delta y uh, is the change from the function uh, from point to point, the actual change or exact change. And the dx and dy are the approximate changes or differentials. Now, dx and delta x are usually considered to be the same because uh, we just move forward from one point to another. Um, but while the triangle indicates how the actual function moves, the d indicates how we move along the tangent line, which is the approximation. So the dy is the approximation using the tangent line. Now notice that dy is calculated using the slope of the function at that point times dx. As we move on to differentials in 3D, we're going to use that same convention of the triangles or deltas, <clears throat> meaning actual changes in the x, y, and z, and the dx, dy, and dz being the approximate changes. Now the inputs, it doesn't matter because they're equal. You're moving forward in the domain some amount. Um, it's the change in the output of the function, the z values, where delta is the actual change and dz is the approximate change. So to find delta z, we just look at how the actual surface goes up or down in the z direction. Uh, for dz, we would use the tangent plane. Now, how do we calculate dz? Well, you can use the tangent plane formula from earlier, but you'll basically get uh, this connection between dx, dy, and the partial derivatives. Now we can compare this to the dy equals f prime times dx from the function of a single variable case. And you'll see that it is the uh, higher dimensional analog of that. So x derivative times dx and y derivative times dy. And that'll get you what's known as the total differential of z. That concludes the presentation on tangent planes. This presentation by Matthew Watts contains images and text from Calculus Volume 3 by Jed Herman and G. Strange, CC BY and CSA OpenStax.